Hi everybody, um, this is Nav Sikand here. Um, some of you will know me through my collecting of vintage fashion dolls, um, but you may also know me through my own fashion doll that I made back in 2016 called Nuke, uh, later joined by her friend Fanfan. Um, I was asked by Rachel and Daya Cease um, to do this video to introduce um, some of my collection of lesser known European fashion dolls, uh, for which I have a passion for. Um, absolutely love them and they've been a major, major influence uh, on my own doll, Anouk, um, who I created. Um, so I'll give you a brief introduction on those. Um, big thank you to Rachel and Di for all that they do in the doll world um, and for asking me to be a part of this virtual doll convention. Um, I hope that you'll enjoy this video and find it informative. All these dolls here that eventually influence the creation of my own doll. So I'm going to show you some of my European fashion dolls. Uh, so I will start with one of my favourites, which is Caprice, who was French and I believe actually made in Paris. There's not much documentation about her. Um, she was available in various hair colours. Here she's wearing all of her own original fashions, which are not always very well tailored. Um, she was available only for about four or five years, and she's very highly collectible now and quite hard to find. Um, she was sold with this little fashion booklet and she had very typically 60s makeup. Um, and as I said, these are all original Caprice fashions. Um, and there was this particular collection uh, that was designed by the very popular French singer, or rather endorsed by, let's say, called Sheila. And uh, they belong to Sheila's Boutique. So... These three were from Sheila, and I believe this very Carnaby Street white faux leather outfit also. And here is the original advert with Sheila herself endorsing the outfits. Now, these dolls are from Germany, and they're called Schwabinchen, which means, I believe, girl from Schwab. And Schwab was a district of Hamburg, which was very sort of alternative and filled with artists and actors and sort of beatniks, if you will. Um, and she was a successor to Bill Lilly, produced by the same factory, and therefore she shares many of Bill Lilly's outfits exactly the same. Same fabric, same snaps, but obviously scaled down. She came with her own booklet. And she was also um, a cartoon, much in the vein of Bill Lilly, by the same artist. Again, very, very highly collectible. Some of her, that's her original stand and coat hangers. And uh, she came in various hair colours, very good quality, but very hard to find now, but not very popular with most collectors because of her unique proportions and uh, somewhat claw-like hands and very sort of severe, almost Asian features. It's She's not a pretty, pretty doll. Here's a very rare one in original packaging. Now following on from Schwabinch and the moulds were sold to um, the Wilderpass uh, doll company in the Netherlands who made their own version called Willy, uh, who's much easier to find but somewhat lower quality. She was only made in blonde and brunette. You'll see a few redheads in my collection, but they're custom dolls. Um, she came in a box and she had her own outfit separately. That She was either sold with short hair in a swimsuit or there was a deluxe long hair version 
with the addition of a waistcoat. These are some of her outfits. As you see, I have quite an extensive collection of them. Um, they really are my favourite dolls. There's a rare platinum version that is a factory original. Um, yeah, and I just, I really, really love them a lot. Very, very quirky dolls. And she was uh, sold for a very long time. I think she was quite an affordable alternative to Barbie. Now these dolls are reproductions actually, but also another French doll based on the cartoons of Edmund Kiraz. And they are highly collectible now, very, very rare. So a very talented guy in America, but of French origin, Michael Ben, created these very faithful reproductions, which in themselves have become collector's items. Um, they're highly stylized, but that's what the original cartoons were like. And they're also wearing reproductions of their original outfits. Um, and much like Caprice, they were launched and endorsed by another 60s songstress, Sylvie Vartan. And here she is promoting the dolls. Um, and as I said, they're extremely popular amongst collectors now and very, very sought after, which is why I only have the reproductions. Now, these ladies here are from former East Germany uh, and they're known as DDR Steffi. Um, they are very unusual dolls. Um, to have a sort of fashion doll in a communist state, uh, but her fashions <laughs> reflect that. Uh, she was sold in the 60s to the early 70s, I believe. Various hair shades, various hairstyles, and some very interesting fashions and fabrics. Um, she came in two types of packaging, and there were lots of outfits sold for her. Um, in very sort of East German style fabrics. Um, again, these have become really popular with collectors. Initially, you could pick them up for nothing. Um, but again, I just have a love for obscure underdog dolls and she definitely falls in that category. Some people find her really ugly, but I really love them. Um, and it was a friend in Finland that got me into them. You can see all the various hair shades and hairstyles. I almost forgot the last doll to show you is the one that actually started it all. Um, Build Lily. I only have three of them. Um, and they were made in Germany in the 50s. I think everybody knows the story by now that... Barbie uh, innovator, innovator in quotes, Ruth Handler, saw her on a trip to Europe and used her as the basis for her prototype of Barbie. Um, and they're very collectible now, not actually as rare as people think, but they're very desirable given the link to Barbie. You can see a number one next to her there. So you can see the similarities in face sculpt hands, proportions. Um, she was also obviously based on a comic strip and these are all hand painted. So they're all very unique personalities and she had great fashions. Um, as I shared, uh, shared by Schwab Inchen over here, who is her cousin slash little sister. Molded shoes, molded earrings, very nice quality doll. Having shown you all those vintage fashion dolls, they were the influences that helped me create my own doll, the Nuke. Hopefully you can see some of those influences in the various collections. This is series one to five. Um, and you'll see elements of all the collections I've just shown you. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing my collection and uh, learning a bit about European fashion dolls. Um, and it was great fun to share it with you.
So thank you.